The Duke Blue Devils will win the ACC Tournament Championship for the 22nd time as they beat Virginia by 10. Yes, Tyrese Proctor is coming back to Duke. Announces that he will return to Duke. He will play for the Blue Devils for his sophomore season. Tyrese Proctor, he stayed in the gym. He continued to work. He just kept grinding at the game of basketball, and you saw it come to fruition. I think basketball um, is definitely on an uprise in Australia. I think America, ha you have a lot more access to different things at an earlier age. The easiest example I could probably think of is there's not a lot of AAU out here, whereas America, at, I don't even know what, what age they start, but there's all AAU tournaments that sort of get kids on the map earlier. Whereas here you really have to sort of progress by yourself at a younger age. Such a big boy after last time. Uh, yeah. um, earliest memory, probably right behind you, that staircase. We first moved into this place. He was two. I was sitting on the stairs. His back was to the front door there. And he was dribbling with his right hand. I'm like, oh, okay, pretty good. And I said, oh, put it to your left hand. So he put it to his left. Didn't bobble, didn't fumble it. Just standing there looking at me dribbling, not looking at the ball. We used to, we used to shoot in the backyard. Um, I used to have a hoop out there. It was, a, it was a mini hoop, like one of the little plastic ones. And I used to like shoot and then he'd rebound. I'd run around like a circle and, and come back and shoot again. Show me your spin move. Whoa. I remember all that. Mum used to sit. Um, at the table outside with Kayla and, and they'd be eating or something, me and dad just be shooting and my feet would get all dirty and stuff because I'd have no shoes on and stuff like that, so. Yeah, so those are good times. Um, and we just worked on certain things and yeah, he just knocked down six, seven, eight, nine in a row. Um, yeah, and he just, it was just natural to him. So I met Tyrese at the NBA Global Academy. Um, he was one of the scholarship players um, when I was coaching there as an assistant coach. Uh, to be honest, it was a pleasure to have him around. He, he was one of those players that always showed up early uh, and wanted to get extra reps. And I was lucky enough to, uh, to be the skill development guy, so I got to, to spend lots of time with him and uh, seeing where he is now and, and how far he's come, it's, it's really uh, good to see and, and, and I think he's got a long way to go still and I trust that you know, the person that he is on and off the court, his work ethic will, will take him a long way so I, I'm very excited to see what's going to happen in his future.
basketball program. Some of the top crap players in the world are from Duke, are at Duke, and potentially just might be going to Duke. Who knows? You never know. But we really appreciate him for being here today with us, and he's made some time to chat with you guys and get to know you a little bit better. My goal, you know, is to obviously make the NBA, but to stay in it. I think a lot of guys try and make the NBA, and, and that's it. Once they feel like they made it, they stop working and, and think they've got it all. So I think just the constant work the ethic and, and um, just trying to be the best player I can be. I think my dad was a big influence on that. He um, he played professionally and stuff, so we, we worked out a lot. Um, he'd go to the stadium and play. We'd shoot before, before we played sometimes, shoot after. Um, we ran a lot of sand dunes and stuff. Uh, so I'm from down south, so we went to Cronulla and, and run a lot of sand dunes over there. Um, a lot of hill hill running, so just anything at a young age to, to just sort of uh, keep me above everyone else um, is what we tried to do. And, uh, so it's on the east coast. Oh. You went to USC. <laughs> <laughs> so again, on a final note for a farewell, can we get a nice round of applause? We're in the room now. That's where I've been living for when I'm back home. I used to be upstairs actually, but Kayla got my got my old room, so I'm down here. Dude's back home. Most of them, most of them are in America right now, actually. But I bought a few of them back. Some off court. Got some of my basketball shoes up that I'll be working out with back here and. A lot of them are at Duke, though, in my locker and stuff like that. I like playing in the LeBrons. I um, I played in I think the LeBron twenty throughout the season. The, like the I think the Ohio State colorway. Um, but no, they were they were comfy as hell. Um, I play in Kyrie's LeBrons. I used to play in these all the time actually. These KDs. I used to play in those in uh, at national tournaments and stuff like that when I was back here. Um, but obviously, you know, we play Duke now, so the colorway doesn't really match. Are there rules on colorway? I don't know. I actually, I actually don't know. I don't think there's like, I don't think you can wear like bright, bright colors, but I don't think there's like an actual like rule. Right. Necessarily. I think a lot of the team don't. Yeah. Uh, I played in these a couple of times in the season as well. Um, they're pretty cool. Blue PlayStation yeah. collabs. Yeah. And then off court. Jordan 11s. Jordan 11s are my favorite Jordan right here. One, two, three. That's probably my favorite shoe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like Jordans. I'm a big Jordan guy. Do you like the highs more or the lows? A bit of both. I don't know. I think I like lows more. Yeah, it depends on the fit. It, yeah, it depends on the fit for sure. Um, but yeah, I got them, Travis's, some off whites. Um, but yeah, I got a lot of shoes back in America in my in my dorm and in the locker right now. Um, but yeah, trying to get my collection up a little bit. I'm a big shoe guy. Um, my little area over here, I guess of what I've achieved so far. So I got all the jerseys that I played played for, all the teams, so Sutherland, my high school back here, Trinity, New South Wales, the Australia team, and then the Global Academy and the Centre of Excellence. My mom actually got these for my birthday uh, when I came back home. So it's just like pictures of the season and stuff. Just a bunch of different pictures. That's tough. Yeah. Do you have a favorite picture from like the, the season? season? Damn. There's a lot of pictures. I'm gonna There's lie. a lot of good ones. I like this one. Like that. That's yeah. clean as. I like that one for sure. Um, I had some good ones against UNC mm. at home. Much just has my stat line and, and the games that we played, um, which is pretty cool. Got the the hat from when we won with the net. So got to cut down the net. How do you end up? Oh, this as one. You cut? Yeah. Oh, I don't even know. Um, cause yeah, we won in Indonesia, and then how did that happen? I think Mitch McCarron had it, and then we were on the bus or something, and he didn't want it. So I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll take it. Like, so I got the whole, the whole net pretty much. Damn. Everyone, everyone got a piece of the net and stuff. Um, ACC, that was a little championship trophy that we got.
And then this is my auntie actually got me this. Um, it's sort of where I've been, where basketball has taken me around the world. I haven't, I haven't um, adjusted it in a, in a little bit, but but yeah, Fiji. So eventually you're gonna have like the US. Yeah, hopefully. Pretty full. Absolutely packed. And then some Olympics maybe. Hopefully, there's Olympic 2020, 2032 in Australia. It's uh, Brisbane. Yeah, Brisbane. Um, that's definitely on the goals. And I think there's one in 20... What's the one before that? 28? Yeah, is it 28? I don't know where at. Yeah. What? And then the Asia Cup medal. There's actually bite marks on it. Tim actually got me this, this book. It's a little diary that I can write some stuff down. Um, and that sort of came in it as well. So I like to just keep that in, in the presence of my room, I guess. The slam article that we we got done this year. It has like a little piece on each guy. Which is pretty cool. It's like the history of Duke and stuff. And I got my colognes. I'm a big cologne guy. I like to smell nice. You be um, using like... I only, I'd only i really be using this one. I'd be using this one on like special occasions like... Yes, I'd be using these two a lot. I don't really use this one a lot. I'd be using these two like an everyday kind of thing. Dude, the AI on Snapchat is crazy. My AI. Because have you seen that chat GPT? Oh yeah, I've used that. Yeah, well it's like that, right? Oh, I'm going to unadded as a friend. Unadded. And you can That's like weird. make it look however you want. So this Kayla's is weird. like, what's the word? Kayla's um. Bitmoji. Yeah, like fixed it now to look that the way fun. she wants. Wait, what happens if you send a snap to her? <laughs> Looks like you're on on the go. Be safe out there on the busy roads. That's crazy. My mom didn't play a lot of basketball growing up, um, so she's not sort of the, the I guess coach wise on court. But she's definitely um, been there for me through through the through everything, all the ups and downs, all the you know success I've had, and and the lowest of the lowest points in my life, and and um, she's always been there for me on a you know someone I can always talk to about anything. Um, she doesn't care what time of day it is, you know, even if I'm in America or or anywhere around the world. Yeah, what are doing? They be playing it at college. It's like a mini tennis game. Is it tennis. Yeah. But on a smaller court. Do they use a tennis racket? No, they use a pickleball racket. <laughs> Why is it called pickleball? I don't know. Look, hang on. That's it. Oh. And then the racket's a, uh, see? It's like that. Cool. Yeah, that looks like the ones that you play, um, what's it called? What's it called? Scoop game you used to play him. When you were a kid, you had the scoops and you'd like throw Oh, and yeah, 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 yeah. What was that thing called? We used to have the tennis racket. We used to hit the. Totem tennis. Is that with the, the with pole, pole and the. About the totem We at, what part of Cronulla is this? Coming up to Shelly Beach. Shelly Beach. Um, I came here a lot with my cousins when I was younger. Um, they used to live around here. We got Lulu, that dog. She's a smoodle. How yeah. old is she, like a couple, one year? She's two. She's two. Lulu. Yeah. Lulu is crazy. Now she's a good dog though. She'd be listening. She'd be hella energetic, which is always good. Brings everyone joy. And she loves to slurp when she walks. <laughs> hey, baby. Come here, good girl. Come here. Come here. You can hold her. Okay. I said you can hold her. Come on. Oh, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs>
the final form. <laughs> you started it. Fruit. Yeah. Mango. Raspberries. Oh. Blueberries. Grapes. You better have grapes. Grapes. Yeah. And then uh, probably no passion. strawberries or passion fruit. Yeah. Not bad. Five. Mandarins. It's the berries. Oh, I yeah, forgot about yeah, mandarins. Yeah. <laughs> mandarins. Great grapes are one. Green grapes are one. I have them before every game. Green grapes are one. Mangoes. Raspberries. Oranges. Plums. Pears. What was the last one? Pear. I'd say apple. Red apple. You're not adding mandarins in? I'd swap. Yeah, I'd swap and put mandarin in. But probably instead of passion fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just had one and forgot. <laughs> what about watermelon? Watermelon's oh, pretty good. Oh, watermelon. Yeah. No, I wouldn't have watermelon. Oh. I wouldn't have that Damn. in my side. But if it's a bad watermelon, it's a bad watermelon. Like, you know that's the, any fruit. No, what about like, your... But like apples, you can't really have bad apples. You can have... Like Ed Sheeran? You like Ed Sheeran? Yeah, he's alright. What about rap? Okay, so out of the people that I play, who do you like? Um, There's I little like baby. that lady you played in the States, Scissor. Oh, Scissor? Okay. I liked her. I liked that girl that was in Scissor. All right, no order. No order. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, no order. No order. Gunner. Baby. Thug. Future. Young boy at times. Like all these slow stuff. And then young boy. Mom's gonna get a tattoo too. <laughs> so we made this bet, Aiden, when yeah. Maurice was like, because I am petrified of needles, right? Of needles. Yeah. I can't stand the thought of needles. And uh, we were chatting about it. And, you know, as a little kid, he used to say to me, Mum, I'm gonna make the NBA one day. And I'd be like, yeah, honey, that's really nice. That's a good dream to have. So you didn't think I would ever make it? Well, no, but well, you were eight. So and then one day we were sitting talking about something and it came up with needles. And I said, oh, Tyrese, I think he was nine or 10 at the time. I said, Tyrese, if you ever make the NBA, I'll get your number tattooed on my wrist. And um, he's now 19 and 10 years later, he still remembers it. But, and now like what? In a year I could be getting a tattoo. It's starting to hit me that, oh my gosh, I might actually have to sit down and get a tattoo on my wrist and, you know, everyone would know he's now got this tattoo on his arm and he had it done last year and as soon as he had it done, he rang me and he goes, Mum, I said, did it hurt? Like, he goes, oh, not really. He goes, it took about eight hours and I just keep saying to him, just make sure your number's one digit, just like a short thing that I can get put on. So we'll see. We're not there yet. the wrist is where it hurts. I mean, that's what I think. It's number really one, the easiest. Yeah, number one. just like one line, right? <laughs> nah, you'll get four or. But if yeah, four or five. Yeah. But if you've got. Cowbell. Beyonce. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. 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 Uh, let me explain it to you, right? So, family. Always means everything, yeah. This is for my uncle who passed away, so I represent him as a dog. A rose is my favorite flower, you feel me? And then I found a god recently, so I had to include Jesus, baby Jesus and Mary, and then another angel, and then filled it up with clouds. So. You know where they're playing 1 4 right now? I said, no way they're playing 1 4 right now. Is this 1 4 or Hooligan? I couldn't tell you. So both teams are looking like a good game. Well. Hey, look at Aiden. Say hi, Aiden. Hi, Aiden. He can't hear you. I thought you were going to dunk that. Four. 
Oh. I wouldn't even get to the room. I got those. You got you have the, the backwards. Too. What color? White. Uh, LeBron twenties. Yeah, it's the same shoe. Oh. That's tough. Uh, yeah, we saw Tyrese uh, come through the ranks in New South Wales and then with New South Wales state team. And um, I guess the decision was made that he was you know, ready for the emotional upheaval that happens when you move away from home. At, and he was a young age, he was 15 when he came in. Yeah. I made a lot of sacrifices. Um, I think the biggest one was probably moving to Canberra and obviously leaving family was a, was a big thing. Um, leaving my sister was a big thing. You know, her growing up without an older brother and, and a, being an only child in the house. Like, so I feel like that was, that was probably the biggest sacrifice I made at an at a early age. And that through, through camps and we saw him in the national teams and saw him how he dealt with his teammates and with referees and coaches and thought he was ready to take on that challenge. Um, and it gave him an ability to, to be here at the same time that there was other good players older than him. Um, and his progress through here really fast-tracked him to where he is now. Like, kids are there for a reason. They love basketball. Um, they want to get better. They, like, they know what they're there for kind of thing. And yeah, Tyrese had all, always had this next level of, um, of understanding of what he was and where he wanted to get to. And I guess that, that was a great starting point for a kid that age to be able to come in here and do well. That's tough, Kira. Yeah. Good pass. Whack. behind the back. Damn! Damn! Oh my god. He just got smacked. Yes sir, Jimbo. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh. That was tough. I got a mic. Hey Aiden. <laughs> Aiden, this is my son right here. This is my son. This is, this is Lou, bro. No, no, no. Listen, listen. This is my son, Deontay Williams, right? He's on the come up, but he's still my son. I'm older than, I'm older than this man by like a couple months. He just... Congratulations to Trey Nodorol. A fantastic effort. Yes, sir, Jimbo. That's first game in ages, too, like a week. That one. There you go, Ben. That's tough, Kenny. Oh. Good pass, good pass. They didn't get stops, bro. Bro, Junior is going to work, bro. On Tui? Good D. Good D. 
You, you ain't scoring until you like that. Huh? I said, you ain't ISO in Tilly, bro. <laughs> uh oh, thank you. And one, boy. Why would you foul? Why would you foul? And will we shoot one? Two of it. Two of them. Other lady scorers out too. One stop at it. One stop. One stop. Bro, y'all need to go, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god. Get another stop. One more stop. One more stop. Go, 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 go. There you go, get another one, get another one. We don't, want, we don't want to talk about it. We, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about it. Do you have salt on the plums? Yes. Watermelon. For sure. With what? Yeah, salt? Watermelon. Salt on watermelon. Salt on plums. Watermelon. Salt on grapes. Salt salt on grapes. On grapes. Sugar on... Sugar on... No, he doesn't put sugar on. Salt. He puts so salt three salt. So salt on salt. blackberries. It's four salts. Like four. Sometimes. Not all the time. That That's was wild. Not a walking heart attack. Sometimes. Walking heart attack. Yeah, with all the salt. Well, that's cholesterol. Cholesterol, <laughs> salt, whatever. Wait, what's he talking about? He says I use too much salt. What's the green one? Um, the green one. <laughs> Grapes? Grapes? No. Apples? Jesus. Apples? Grapefruit? No. Um, you know how you got the... Is that green? I don't know. You know how you got the... Um, Passion fruit? Uh, oh, cantaloupe? Yes. Ew. That's oh, not no. green. That's, that's orange. That's not green. That's, no. that's, that's rock melon. No, rock melon. Rock melon. Yeah. Rock, rock melon's orange. Rock melon's orange. Rock, well, cantaloupe. Great. No, cantaloupe is another one. No, word. that's honeydew. Honey that's honeydew. Honey I like honeydew. Ew, that's the most boring fruit there is. That's the one that people throw out in a fruit salad. I like honeydew. Do you have salt on that? No. Oh, I like honeydew. That's the one that... I mean, I don't know if I have a favourite moment. Every moment we were over there watching him in Cameron and live was incredible. I think the one that when we were sitting here watching him play the UNC game, which at UNC they won, and um, as he was walking off, they kept spanning across to him and Mark and he was pointing, saying, look at the scoreboard with like this massive big grin and smile on his face. And I guess, you know, it's just cause that's Tyrese. That's the, you know, he's a bit of a joker. He um, just anytime he looks like himself on the court is when I like it, right? He doesn't have to be top scorer. He doesn't have to, be the best just when he's looking like himself and being him, I guess they're sort of some of the things that I remember. Oh. Are you okay? No. What are oh, you yes. doing, Vito? It's gone. <laughs> it's gone, Rod. I put it over the fence. Yeah, I'm not sure. They won't hurt you. <laughs> yes, they may, buddy. They just catch the mozzies. Go off and crawl on the arm. Go like this. They just catch the mozzies. Yes, um... That's got to be the big way! <laughs> <laughs> Man, don't wreck a good friendship. <laughs> that was like, go that was away. Go away. Go away. Aiden, delete that. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Oh my god. Exactly. No, that was bad. That was bad.
I watched him at the NBA Academy a lot. And last year, when he was playing in the NBL one at his age, and he was playing some of them teams over in Queensland and, and Melbourne, a lot of them teams had grown men and NBL guys on those rosters. They were star studded. And this kid was having his way with them. He was having his way with him. And I used to be watching the games like online and I used to just be like, man, this kid can play basketball. Like, this kid can play basketball. So we're at my auntie's house right now. We better do some yoga, um, get our bodies right, and and just start the day off. Start the day off right. It's a nice view as well. And yeah, I get to it. My boy Nate here with me. So your nice long line, straight spine, and everything switched on. The four, that right leg. And have a big breath there. Stay three big breaths. Remove tension and it's some pains from the body. So starting at the hips, lower back, middle back, and standing now fully. So I don't know how much vinyasa flow you do, but I'm gonna teach you today. So we're gonna inhale and scoop, lift your hands above the head, plate the palms, and then we're gliding our hands down in front of our chest and come back into your forward fold. So you're hinging from the hips with the nice straight back. So my name is Joanne Davies Grek, and I am Tyrese's aunt and his godmother. Come back with your open arms. His um, coach, I guess, asked him when he came back to continue with his uh, regime of, I suppose, his basketball workouts, but also to find some. Um, some place to do yoga. At least I think that's how it came through. So he asked his mom when he landed, does she know anyone? And I think he's been away so often. She actually turned to him and said, Tyrese, your aunt is a yoga teacher. So um, they rang me, I think on the car ride home or the day he arrived um, somewhere during the day and just said, oh, would I, would I be able to do that? And yeah, obviously we miss him. So it's just a nice way for me to not only then bring what I know and impart the wisdom and knowledge to him, but spend some, some quality time with him. We come into our warrior. Nice wide arms. Start again, focusing your intention and your attention. And then we're gonna cup that hand up towards the ceiling. Exhale, lean back and you're coming into warrior one. So bend a little bit in that front leg. Big breath. Exhale, left hand back down to the earth. Wherever you are to just straighten the spine. That's where I'm holding my stress. If you feel it somewhere else, just use your awareness and send the breath there. So many bugs out here, bro. What is that? What are the bugs like in Australia? I mean, you guys saw oh, the spider. The spider. <laughs> the other <laughs> night. Yeah, bro, there's like there's so many spiders over here. It's bad. I haven't seen it. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't really saw a spider in America. Yeah. That's like one or two my whole time I was there. But like, I don't even know. What, Australia what got the creatures. But there'd be For lizards real. and stuff out here. And hey, Dad, what was that animal that be popping up in the backyard all the time? Is it the lizard? Uh, water dragons. Yeah, water dragons and possums and. I seen there was one snake out the front of our house. It was like a green, green tree snake. Nah, I was explaining to Aiden what animals we'd be getting back here. There was a massive funnel up at the door the other day. Oh yeah, spiders. So. Damn. When it rained, 
and it gets really wet. I don't know why they come right up to the what back is this? So I walked out and went to put my slides on. And it was right next to my slide. What is that? A zucata or something caught in the web or a roach? Look like a roach. Oh. What is zucata? Yeah, but we get lots of things. That water dragon's still back there. It's about last time I saw it. What did you name it? Speedy? Kayla named it Speedy. <laughs> it's about that long. With his tail, it's about that long. We pulled into the driveway and Kayla was younger. She was like, oh. A snake. snake and we were like oh don't be silly we get out the car and it's just right at the front door crawling all up around the door then just went into the hedges just wow. left. yeah look back at us and just kept going it's beautiful though hella birds yeah a lot birds. of birds kookaburras yeah mm. a lot of kookaburras um what are the wild ones cockatoos cockatoos they all the be cookers, on the fences the cookers nest here in the trees and the young ones yeah he said he gets turkeys yeah, brush crazy. turkeys. Oh, yeah. We don't brush get turkeys. turkeys or yeah. turkeys or whatever they call them. Yeah. Here, what are we at? Not that one. That's the big one. Bro, have you heard this? She sounds exactly like that. Bro, this girl is like... Dude, she's like, you know the news reporter? Remembered that they're now That's not her, she just sounds like her. Instead of what? <laughs> this is a national disgrace. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. What is it, uh, 60 minutes or something? That's who she's trying to sound like? Yeah. We got Alexandria. About to watch uh, Kayla play. I'm coaching. Coach, him. Coach, Coach Brown. Brown. Coach house. Brown. Uh, I haven't watched her in a little while, so it's gonna be good to see to see where she's at and, and you know, I know she's she's gone a lot better, so it'll be good to see how she is. Next time just hit me out. It was um she's come a long way. Since going from college to to coming back now she's probably made the biggest jump she has in her in her career you know me being in america i wasn't able to see all of her games any games at all and i was always getting updates from from mum and dad or videos from nate of, of them working out in the mornings before school and after school and stuff like that and and coming back and watching her play she's she's gone a lot better and and has a has a really bright future um she's a she's a really good defender um I don't know how that came about because I used to never play defense back in high school and stuff like that. Once she, you know, got out of gymnastics and dancing, went through all those phases, and she said she wanted to play basketball. So, yep, hard training. I was hard on her just like I was hard on him. If Kayla continues to grow and can get to her brother's height, <laughs> oh my God, it's going to be scary. One of her goals was to make the state team. And granted, she has made the state team. In basketball, I want to go to college over in the States and then hopefully like the WNBA. But I plan to reach them by just keep working out and just keep like doing what I'm doing. Um, she just made her first state team the other day. Uh, the team got announced and they'll be going to Perth to play. So I'll, I'll be watching that online for sure and, and seeing how she goes in that. But she's been tremendous in her work ethic and, and um, it's just good to see her work on the field. Coach Brown's in his home. Oh boy. I want to see you. Are you going to the solo? Probably not. I'm tired. They take it early. They do, and they get his stint with the at, with the Asia Cup. I think he separated himself right then and there. Like he separated himself from everybody being on that big stage, like at his young age or whatever, like that. When he was able to witness, like in 4K, what he did over in Asia Cup at 18 years old, 
like on that court with some of the best players, like that separated us out. Going to Indonesia was was really a really good experience, and I feel like my game developed a lot of that tournament. Obviously, playing with older guys and playing against older grown men that have played in FIBA basketball for a long time. You know, coming away with a gold was was one of the goals that we had going in, and um, to actually have done it, it was it was a really surreal feeling, I guess. out of the five because the other two days I got NBL one practice Tuesdays yeah. and Thursdays okay. so Monday Wednesday Fridays I'm in here by myself My dad got a lot of the calls like from college coaches and stuff like that. I didn't really like call him directly. So he had a he, he was on the phone with him and I was in my room just chilling on my phone. Screen. And dad came in and said, like it was on mute and said, like the head coach of Duke is on the phone right now, like he wants to talk to you. And I sort of looked at him like, like, like what did you just say? Like <laughs> And um yeah, so I ended up talking to Shia in, in my room by myself and sort of just went from there. We had lots of Zooms, lots of phone calls. Didn't matter, three, four in the morning, phone never stopped. Yeah, the visits were just amazing. Then you gotta go away and try to put the pieces together. Is it the right fit for him? How does he feel? Um, what sort of support do they have for him? Because he's coming from Australia. So those are all the things we have to just consider. Um, but it was amazing. And then once we got to Duke, geez, um, that's just, to me, that's like, Madison Square Garden in New York, that's the mecca of basketball. Duke is the mecca of college basketball. And, and yeah, I was, I was a student athlete at Duke, so it, was, it, it, couldn't, it couldn't have gotten much better, and I, I loved it, I still do. Um, it's a great place to be, and it's an insane place to play at, and um, yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world.
Just work. That's all it is. Just work. Just work. Just work. Uh, so I'm from uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, I grew up in uh, a rough neighborhood you known as Stanley Holmes Village. Uh, so you name it. For me, it was either basketball or be the pr a product of my environment as well. I ended up, you know, going to junior college, playing junior college basketball after high school, ended up receiving a scholarship to play at Delaware Valley University. And uh, I remember investing in myself, telling myself I want to be a professional basketball player, invested in myself, took a flight to Mexico, tried out for some teams, you know, ended up getting my first contract over in Germany. And from there, I took off. Uh, I got a playlist on there that's fire. My story is far from written. My, my book is far from done. So I got signed here back in 2018, 2019. I was signed to play with the Sutherland Sharks. And I remember, you know, arriving in Australia, beautiful weather, beautiful beaches. As I'm beginning to work out and things like that, everybody is like, oh yeah, you didn't import here, you didn't import here. You need to meet Rod Proctor. Like, I'm just like, all right, cool. Didn't pay no mind. We had a tournament, a preseason tournament uh, down in Canberra. I met some random guy just, you know, seeing each other. He just know you from America because he was, he an older dude. Uh, his name is Carl Bruton. Have a look at that camera. Like, look at that camera. We're going to go to work now, all right? <laughs> and uh, he just like, yeah, you down in Sutherland. I'm like, yeah, he just like, oh, my man Rob Proctor down there. Like, you gotta meet Rob Proctor. So I'm just like, all right. This is like the second, third time that I heard his name. Like, maybe I gotta meet this guy. And then uh, I remember meeting him, going uh, up to the pub after a training session. And we just start talking and going back and forth and found out that he had a 15 year old son, like who, you know, was pretty good in basketball. He was at, he was at a house one day and, um, I remember coming home and I, I met him for the first time and ended up meeting him and we just, from there, we've been locked in ever since. And you know, he's like an older brother to me and, and, and a mentor in a sense, like he, we, do, we pretty much do everything together when I'm home. Getting my own workout in, messing with this guy. First possession of year two is doing this. Make sure you put this in the bloopers. He keep missing. He need 10 in a row. <laughs> and he's blaming the rim. Give us 10. Huh? Give us 10. Give us 10? Ah, that's easy.
That's a boost? Damn. Is that a boost? Tyrese loves his Damn. boost. Damn. See, that's a waste of a boost right there. Boost is top one. Top one. one. So he was triple bottom age and under 12s. So he was quite young when he started. Um, but we go to the stadium every weekend, up to Sutherland Basketball Stadium, six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. Um, and we made it a tradition every weekend, regardless if it was during the season, off season, whatever, we'd always go. And I'd always take him to our favorite cafe and have breakfast afterwards. And we'd just talk about what he worked on and so forth. How special was it for you to play your last game in Australia? Yeah, that was crazy. Um, to sort of start my junior career at a at a club at a court and sort of finish it at the same court, it was it was kind of mind blowing. I'm not gonna lie, because I reclassified and then found out I was going earlier, and it sort of aligned with the same day that we played Sutherland. Um, so, yeah, there was a lot of people at that game, a lot of people that I sort of knew and, and, and had been around my whole junior career, my whole life pretty much. Um, it was just cool, you know, playing against the guys that I was watching, you know, that I was watching sitting up in the stands uh, in Sutherland. And, and yeah, we ended up getting the win, so it was even better. But no, it was a really cool experience and, and definitely a great send off. Been here since birth, and yeah, gonna miss it. Oh, 
what you get. Just gotta up and go. A little protein. Yes, me. sir. Had a good workout just then. Now it's time to get some rest for these dunes tomorrow morning. Get some food. Get some good eats. It's a wrap. College basketball is, you're playing every couple of days. Like, it's like a mini state or nationals in a sense. You can't dwell on losses, but you can't settle for wins. So it's like, you have to really stay level-headed the whole season, which is really tough, like, especially as a freshman. Gotta get out here, get some work in before the sun comes up and it gets way too hot. Gotta do this one today, and then we're doing that one Friday. Yeah, just not getting on the roller coaster of wins and losses and and staying neutral the whole the whole season was really important. Here it's like a one day, two day turnaround. So you really got to be strong mentally. So did you play any other sports growing up? Yeah, so I played soccer for like seven years. I played baseball uh, for a few years. I played soccer in high school as well. Um, before I moved down to the academy, I was still playing it. But I always was always sort of basketball first. <laughs> Why do you think it is that basketball stuff? Uh, I think I just love it. I think I've always been around it. My parents didn't sort of push me in a direction where it's like, you need to play basketball, use a basketball. It sort of always just came to me and I always sort of went to basketball. Um, it's just like an escape for everything else as well. I love it, so it's can't, you can't really like put it into words in a sense. It's just like an escape for everything else as well. Um, if stuff's going on in life, I can always go back to basketball and just go get shots up by myself or, or go get a lift in or something to prepare me for basketball. But yeah, I just, I've always had a knack for it and, and I've always loved it and um, yeah, I just wouldn't, I, I just couldn't see myself playing any other sport. The system keeps changing and the styles of basketball. So what we need to do is to keep giving the players the necessary skills, physical skills, the mental skills to be able to compete and respond and to adapt and their relationships. Then they can go and manage whatever comes their way. Yeah, Tim's been great. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better trainer. He's, yeah, he's shown me things in my game that I didn't even know I had to get better at. And it's just a new new perspective of, of what he knows, new knowledge of what he knows. He's coached and, and trained a lot of a lot of guys as well. And he was a point guard. So just the knowledge that he's taken away from the game as well, helping me. <laughs> Come on, Jim. Validate it. <laughs> We sort of clicked as soon as we got on court together and yeah, we we're gonna stay in touch for for pretty much the rest of my life. I like I I loved him. He um yeah, he helped me a lot. Got some good work in this morning. Back out here. Um, Friday. Aiden got one in there. At the end. <laughs> At the end. He dropped his phone. But no, good work. Bruce, man. Tyrus Bruce propped up. Doing the duties out here. 
Uh, this this one this one's for now. This one's for after the workout, and this one's for tonight. You gotta you gotta, you gotta be prepared. You never mm -hmm. know when you might want to boost. Delivery orders. <laughs> I like the fact that you called to see if any of us were going to do it. Thank you. Mr. Boost. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just did my boost, boost deliveries. Yeah. You post it. Snapchat, Instagram, I'll, I'll do anything. <laughs> you name it. <laughs> 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 nah, for real, I actually do need a boost and I do. Now, imagine boost in America. Janine? If you are watching this, um, hit my hit my line. I'm open to do any business with Boost. Facts, bro. Any business Go whatsoever. Comment. In. Tyrese yeah. Proctor, give him a boost. boost. Hey. Um, hey, he dropped 51. Free Nate. <laughs> free Nate. <laughs> Yo, free me. Free Nate. Yeah. Free Nate, yeah. bro. We need, I just want to rock, just follow, follow Uzi. <laughs> That's it, that's it. And then we need, uh, baby. Yeah, we need our baby, of course. Folks, now got the music coming. Bro, what's with you and your ads? Huh? You and ads. <laughs> Bro's got ads out here. Yeah, I've been a point guard my whole life. When I was younger, I was always really, really tall but I was always a point guard. My dad being the coach at a younger age, he obviously had an impact in that. And I had to try to balance that with the whole team. I think I was slightly hard on him, <laughs> let him tell the story. Um, but his biggest challenge was the teams we were on, they were very dedicated and played really hard, but I don't know, we just never had size. So we always played against taller teams and that went against us at times. So his biggest challenge was, instead of him going out trying to score 40 points a game, his biggest challenge was getting everyone else involved and still trying to win, playing the right way. I never won as a junior. I never won tournament. I never won my competition. So not winning this many games, he was like, well, should I go to a different association? And we were like, no, you stick it out. You, this is a bit of aversion. You just got to work your way through it. And thankfully so, because it made him the player that he is today. I truly believe that. It's the fact that by being in teams that often lost, and he was often a captain, he had to learn to fight from behind. He had to go, okay, well, that's okay. We don't have to win this one. Um, Tyrese is, Tyrese would rather have a bad game and his team win than have a great game and his team lose. So I think just that tenacity and that inner strength to want to keep going is maybe what sets him apart. keep going because if you just keep training and practicing then you can do like anything because he used to always train and just keep going to the gym and that's how he like got where he is today so I feel like if I keep doing that I can just get where I want to be too. He just never wanted to give up he just said he was gonna do it and I think um, I think us being a really tight-knit family helped, so when there were tough times, he could come home and tell us and we'd help him through that. Even within an individual or within a team practice, he can make adjustments on the run. 
I think we saw that this year. A Duke where he started in one position, got thrown to another position, and he figured that out really quickly. He figured out the whole college scene, and I think good players can make those adjustments and not have to wait for coaches to tell. So they can essentially coach themselves on the floor and look after themselves off the floor. That is the most. That is the most. They're playing Sutherland this weekend. We're going to win. Right here, this court. This scoreboard. Sutherland's going to win. Bruin, zero, visitor, one. Yeah, this is the most trashiest celebration. If I see you hit a three for Duke and do this, I would I like that. He said it's shock week. <laughs> Him and all of them. Hey, let me go now. Yeah. Hey, bro, look, 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 look. <laughs> He got the kids doing it. Oh, look, you hit it? Look. That's fire. <laughs> Bro, that is fire. Thanks, Dan. What are you doing? Talk to the camera. Watching the NBA one Nathaniel play. Thanks, huge impact on Bankstown. He's always there. He knows a lot of people at Bankstown, which which I think is really cool, just going to that environment. And by the time we finished working out, he'd have individuals with other kids. Train kids one-on-one -on -one individually. I'm helping with like skills and development stuff like and it's something that I get to look back and reflect on as a humbling experience because I remember when I was that age doing those same type of drills and trying to get better and wanting to get better at basketball. So my day-to-day -day life literally consists of I live in Bankstown Basketball Stadium. He, he pretty much lives at the stadium. We be in the gym all the time. But no, it's been, it's been cool. Um, he, he always calls me while I'm in America FaceTimes me, messages me. You know, he's always got a smile on his face and helping other people um, and giving back to, to a community that he didn't even grow up in, which I, which I found really cool and, and, and really special. How has your experience been playing in the NBA one? I have legit been having a ball, like playing in NBL one. Like so much that I want to explore other conferences. But the East, the NBL one East where I play now, just the jump from last year to the, this year has been crazy. A bunch of NBL guys come down to play and whatever like that. Every team has two imports pretty much basically. So the Americans is getting out here a lot now. So can't complain, I'm having fun. <laughs> Australia now. So him having that experience and knowledge of, of just different types of basketball and, and he's had you know a lot of coaches that have, have taught him a lot of stuff so just trying to pick his brain on some of that and you know he's he's helped me a lot on court and uh, I think that's you know one thing that we emphasized when I when I first came back just getting my handle quicker and 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 stronger I guess. Like he could be special. If 
few times he showed up to our training sessions and he actually joined in with our training sessions and our training sessions used to get like pretty competitive like and he stood out like he stood out you would have thought like it was like yo is, is Tyrese gonna play with y'all like nah he's at the COE like we wish he could play with us but um just that alone it was like yeah Good day. What's my boys? Look at this old head right here. He, I don't know what he's doing. Um, but yeah, have a good day. Stay Back tuned. out again tomorrow. Stay tuned. All coming. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that was good. What's up, Nate? Nathaniel in the car. No, I'm just, I'm nervous for this yoga thing. Oh, don't be nervous. No. It's so kind. I'm nervous. Huh? You good? That's the fun part. The flexibility, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Therapist of my son once said that you need to have strength, you need to have endurance, and you need flexibility, and you need it in three equal parts. So yoga brings that flexibility, and I think if you have that, it will also keep you from injuring yourself, snapping or pulling or tearing muscles. And then exhale down to hands and your fingertips, and then we'll take that little. I've been doing that Tuesday, Thursdays um, every week since I've been here and I think it's, it's helped me a lot obviously with my flexibility and, and my body but, but also mentally. Just some of the breathing stuff that we do, um, I've been practicing on court as well. If I'm struggling on court throughout my workouts and stuff, I just you know re relate that and then sort of transition my yoga to my yoga breathing to on court and, and I found like it's helped me a lot and I feel like I can you know go back to my breath. During class today, I just mentioned you have an anchor of your breath, and I think that when you're under pressure, and this is not only in sport, but I think in life, if you can find a way to come back to the calmness of that breath so that you can come back to sort of being at your peak performance when then you're out on court or playing your game, yeah, being able to kind of shut out the noise and come back to what you know and, and what you're good at, it, it's just a good, a good connection to be able to make like that. With the exhale, melt back into reverse warrior, opening up right Coming here, I did not think that I would be in a yoga class. I'm in a layup line, feeling super bouncy. 
like even in my own games and that's definitely a testament to the yoga. Obviously doing it at the beach is somewhere that I missed while I was in America so which is really good for my mental health and yeah I just think it's good for for everybody um, that's an athlete but for me personally, I've, I've really enjoyed doing it and she's taught me a lot about my, you know, my breath and, and my body as a whole and, and um, I'll definitely um, continue to do that throughout my time at Duke and throughout my hopefully long-lasting basketball career. Thank you for practicing today. Good job, Yogi. Namaste. Twist one way and twist the other. <laughs> About to get the best feed in Sydney. The French toast. The French toast. Should pull my jump. Hey Nate, tell me about the French toast. The best French toast, ice cream, strawberries. You know they don't be doing ice cream. French toast. Why? Why? <laughs> Swiss. We have Nate Brown. Nate Brown walking in the building. What up, Nate? What's good, baby? I'm let you behind the camera. How was that? How was that French toast, boy? Oh man, sensational. Sensational? Mm -hmm. What was sensational about it? <laughs> and I was legit telling him, like, yo. When are you going to get an end game dunk? Like, when are you going to get an end game dunk? Like, yeah, game going by, game going by. He got plenty of opportunity. He laying the ball up, laying the ball up. And then one time, one game, man, he made a crossover. He drove down the middle. And I wasn't even expecting it. Four for three point land. And oh, down the lane. Oh. And with a big time stop. He took two steps. He went up. Oh, punched it. I almost threw my phone, jumped up on the bed. I'm like, oh, like, let's go. I was going crazy. Man, when he got downhill, took his two steps and punched it, I'm like, different, like, different. So that was my favorite moment. As most freshmen go through ups and downs. Tyrese definitely did that. Uh, so I thought his season built as it went on, uh, just as the team's season built as it went on. I think he's really set himself a great foundation to have a very strong sophomore year. Uh, and then I guess it's up to him to see where he goes after that. So my bottom age 16, so that was my first like big nationals. We got bronze in that tournament. I came off the bench. You know, my top age 16s, uh, I had a I had a pretty good 16s top age and and I was sort of the leader of that team and group and um, and then 18s was sort of my big bottom age 18s and top age 18s were both of my big real like really big nationals. So under 18s, he was he was firing on all cylinders. You know, you come up against the Vicks and Queenslands, which are stronger teams. I felt like, you know, teams were really honing in on him, and he had to try to find that balance of making the right plays and right reads quick enough to get his teammates involved. I thought he he played really well in under 18s overall. Yeah, there's a lot of mixtapes going out then, and and a lot of people going to. The, the games to record and you know that's when the college just started becoming interested in stuff. What was it like once you started to get like high like media attention and how did you handle that? 
I just guess not not paying attention to it too much and and not you know there's obviously going to be haters and bad comments and stuff like that but not getting attached to that but also not getting attached to the good comments and, and praising you and, and saying good stuff about your game or, or you as a person so I think just fi staying level-headed was a really big thing for me which I I thought I did pretty well at and like I said my family that helped me through that whole process you know the media is going to be from my career on now it's going to be be there every game every day so Gotta go get my hair done real quick. Gotta twist it back up. I think I prefer it in twist now. You prefer the twist? I think so, yeah. Do you think I look older or younger with my hair? My hair out? Probably younger. Really? Yeah. But if it's twisted it up, I think it's I think it's younger. It's been so long now, I think I'm just gonna twist it up majority of the time now. Because I don't want it to dread. Because it'd be dread. Hello. Let's get it. Hey, do you think you can get your hair braided? Do you think you can braid his hair? He can, but his hair is short. Yeah, mine's short. Yeah. Can't be. Do I have a oh. few cookies? He's so. Right. Right. You got that KO still? Go to the box. Yeah. I'm trying to put that like his. Gone. If one wins though, no, I might, I might convert, uh, I might uh, switch over to LeBron. I feel like I don't think he has bigger to. impact though. Yeah. Fucking crazy man. No, once it gets fully done right, we'll see. Once the bug gets done. Boy, girl. Yeah, the boy. Yeah, the boy. God, I see your baby. Yeah, you smell that? Oh, it smells good. Oh. It smells good right now. Unfortunately, the camera does not like. Aiden, you camera. can't smell through the video, but no. someone's cooking up. Someone's cooking something beautiful. It actually smells nice. Though. What do we do today? Yoga, worked out. Had the best French toast. Yes, sir. 2232, two, is that what it's called? If you're in the area. Yes, Sutherland the, area. This is a good cafe right there. It's a there. great cafe. We've been going there for a minute now. We got his head done. We're here in. Hey, where are we? We're in the country. Nah, we're on our way to Canberra. About to go see some of the guys and some of the coaches and get a couple workouts in the there. orange juice. Give me some orange juice. Yes, uh, it's a go-to. Have to. Miss the exit. 
realized. And now they want to run it back. I used to live by the. Yeah, AIS. The Academy, NBA Academy's here, COE's here. When were you, when were you here, Nate? When were you? Uh, no problems. Yeah. These are the best rims, bro. Oh, they look pretty good. They're bouncy though. They have TVs in every court now. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Um, Sutherland, you're playing against kids that play basketball for fun and you know there's some games where it's not the best competition sort of thing where you transition that into the academy like you know you're playing against guys older stronger than you the first memory i have of him is saying oh you know he's he's young to start with uh, not many 15 year olds come in here he's kind of little i mean <laughs> physically immature and uh physicality was a huge thing that sort of shocked me early um and then you know once you adapt to it you get really good and when I went home and started playing against, you know, the kids I used to play against, and I, that's when I sort of really knew I was getting better, and and it started showing all the work that I put in at the academy. You know, it's a live-in place. You know, we get to coach them every day, uh, twice a day, three times a day if we want. My first thought was, he's not going. <laughs> he's 15. I'm not letting him go. He was going to leave home. I just didn't know it was going to be at 15. It was exciting but like kind of sad at the same time because that meant that I was pretty much just at home by myself now without like another sibling. I just kind of got used to it but it was very difficult like at the start. Having a sibling in your house, having another person you can lean on that's you know roughly around the same age as you was sort of, it was hard for both of us I guess because obviously me wanting to be there for her and, and stuff like that so you know that's that's why I want to make it to the NBA to give back to Kayla and, and give back to my family. Playing at nationals really helped. I had a, I had a couple of really good nationals, and then they were always at my school game, like my high school games and and my rep games for Sutherland. My my dad used to always say, um, "You never know who's watching," and so that's sort of something that I always stuck by. Like even if it's just a local comp game or something, like just always taking every game the same. And yeah, you never know who's going to see that that film. You never go know who's going to see the tape. Okay. The back end of his time here, he really accelerated and we were starting to already think about what can we do to help challenge him so his next year here uh, would be fulfilling for him. And that's when the opportunity came up at Duke to, to go a year early and sure we would love to keep him here and win a lot of games but um, that's not what this place is about. I always watched a lot of Duke growing up. Um, obviously in March Madness and stuff, me and Dad used to watch all the tournaments and so I didn't really know what to expect going on campus, but yeah, as soon as I stepped on campus, it's, it was home, like, there's no other way to put it. Um, my family felt comfortable, I felt comfortable. Um, speaking to Coach K and... Um, sitting down with Coach K was amazing, you know. He came out and they, was, they were meant to have a shoot around 
and he vetoed the Tyrese and myself sitting in the stands. I'm like, I'm sure he's got to shoot around with the guys. Didn't fa did not phase him one bit. It was amazing. And to know that he was going to always be involved in Tyrese's career, regardless if he was leaving um, or retiring. So I called Shia and the coaches when I was at the Hoop Summit in Portland while I was committing, which was pretty cool. And then I sort of publicized it um, before the Hoop Summit game. Um, so yeah, that whole experience was, was really cool. Yeah, a couple months later, coach called me and was like, what do you think about reclassifying coming this year? I well, wasn't expecting it, so it sort of like shook me a little bit. I was thinking I was leaving a year later. So it all, yeah, it all happened really quickly. And it was, it was probably one of the best decisions that I made and my family made and, and I've loved every bit of it. Yes, Spider-Man. Xavier Cook's in the lead. He got going up on the wall. He on the yeah. Thanks, baby. We're going for find another day in a bit. Yes, French toast for sure. Man, man. I'm full pockets full and up here. Come on, back inside. How'd you like driving a camera, Nate? Oh. That was my first time driving. Usually I'm in the passenger seat. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. One and done. One and done. One and done. I'm going to the lead. I'm going to the lead. The hell after that. We're going to the arcade. <laughs> to the arcade. Which I'm obviously going to win every game. <laughs> Especially race car driving because I'm undefeated in that. What about basketball? But we'll see. Who's yeah. better at basketball? Me. This is arcade basketball. Who's better? Like, as in, like, arcade shooting? Yeah, on the mini hoop thing. No, but arcade's a bad hoop. <laughs> Normal hoops, like a smoking every day. It's still a hoop. A hoop is a hoop. Okay, now I'm better. Because okay, well, you're used to American hoops. <laughs> <laughs> American and Australia hoops are the same. So it's, a, it's a basketball rim. Nah, it's American. I'm definitely going to beat him in race car driving. Like, Race car is hey, just Aiden. my natural skill. Get ready to roll the clip. Just, just hold it. Just get ready to roll. Do you play like? air hockey? Air hockey. With the ah, oh, like the, the puck. Yeah. Oh. Puck. That one I can... Yeah. No, we driving. We can get best of three. Yeah. Best of three races. Okay, How many records have I broken on the basketball hoop? Like on the the little arcade hoops. America with Charlie and stuff. When you guys were over there. The record was like low. Some like two year old would have done it. The bowling that we used to go to? Yeah. I broke the records there. Great job. What's the color in there? The They are incredibly close and they adore each other and so She's seen what it's taken him to get to this point, and so I think she knows what it takes, so she works just as hard. I think he's a role model because he, he's never too busy for her. He spends time with her, he'll go to the gym with her, he'll help her, he'll talk to her. They talk every day, even now that he's overseas. He's 
a very good brother. He's always like there for me and it's just really fun to hang out with him. She, you know, she has her goals and, and um, she, she definitely puts in the work so, and, it, and it is starting to show now. Um, she just made her first state team. Obviously missing her whole junior career and, and stuff like that when I wasn't able to watch her play and stuff. It's just cool going and even watching practices and, and, and her games as well. But just being around her and seeing her you know, on the court because of all the missed time that I, I wasn't able to. And, and yeah, just going to practices and helping her, giving her tips here and there and, and trying to help her in a sense. So yeah, it's, pretty, it's been pretty good. Schmitty's is the best chips you will ever get in your life. Schmitty's? Yes, this one that I remember when we first went over to Duke, we went over and me and him played one on one. And it was just like funny playing against him because even though he's literally like four years older than me and way taller, he still like is cocky about it. So if he'd score, he'd like do this big celebration and all that. All right. She thinks she's going to make me in you hear that bad boy? Come on.
seven. I'm behind the camera now. Let me just get all my kids. All my kids right. Here we go. Get the form right. Me personally, I think Jackson is gonna win. He's gonna win. 25, 18, 15. He's not made. So run to Jackson. Round one. Jackson, 46. 39, 33. Look at Aiden. Look at that follow through. Oh my god, look at that follow through. Is it look? I want all of them. I want all of them looking at me. All of them. Get out of here! Get out of here! Oh my god. Get that out of here! Aiden is struggling. Aiden is struggling. 80, 122, and 112. Wow. Wow. And they still, they still didn't beat me. Still didn't beat me. Camera off the no, top. No, no. Wait, where? Where is it? Are we doing manual or automatic? Manual. manual. All right, I'll do manual. I'm driving Aiden's car right now. Thanks, bro. Manual. <laughs> Personally, I had a I had a good learning experience last year, and you know, getting into the rhythm of college and and the lifestyle and and the games and and everything as a whole. I can't wait for next season. I think we got a we got a really good team coming back. We got really good pieces. I think it's going to be a big leadership season for me and and a couple of the other guys that are coming back. We got a really good class coming in. Um, Sean, Jared, Caleb, TJ, like we got a really good really good group of guys coming, freshmen coming in and. I feel like we're going to be really versatile pretty much one through five. I mean, it's, this is one of the great parts of, of this job. Really. The players go and they go elsewhere. I can sit and watch and see what they do. And, but I think he'll become uh, a bigger piece 
of their offense. I think he'll run their offense, but he'll become a bigger piece of the scoring part of their offense. I think he, his defense will continue to develop, and I think his leadership will continue. His grind and what he wants from this, like you can tell like that nothing is gonna stop him from achieving what he wanna achieve. And I think like the sky is the limit for him. So I'm excited on him getting back on campus and his year two coming up at Duke University. Is that a boner? Nah, over here. Bag review. Bag review, Cal. So, I got my blue fairy for. I got two pizzas, the trolley pizzas. Then we Jackson's got. Jackson's depressed he didn't get his Minecraft sword. <laughs> then we I'm got a hot dog, which I already ate. And a mini pizza. What did you get, Jackson? Solid, solid. <laughs> no. Same amount as his egg. <laughs> but his stupid egg took priority if you didn't even know it before. So Mike and I, two, two uh, burgers and one, two, three, five chubba chubba. Oh yeah, wait. We're going to talk about who ended up winning in, in the basketball and the races. I, you. I literally won in the races. He beat me in the other one because my steering wheel wasn't working. This is Hang bad. On. Hang on. Basketball? Who won? No, for real. Who won? You in the first one. We only played one. No, no, no. Me and you. Yeah, you won the first one. No, no. One. I only yeah, played yeah, one yeah. time. Yeah. I won. The, the motorbike race? I won. The Mario Kart? You won. Who won? We did two races. No, we did three. We did two races. Did we do three or two? We did oh, no, the motorbike, racing. Mario, and then oh, the other racing. One? No, we didn't. Listen, because I was on manual, you were on auto. I think Kayla won, to be honest. It Thank was you two very one. Much. Listen, listen, listen. Oh my god. You want to cheat anymore? Do you want to cheat anymore? No. Motorbike? That's one race, right? Motorbike. That's one race. Mario? Got that's the a, footage. That's the, the second race, right? The third race was the, the actual car when I was in manual and you were in auto. It's because my steering will never work.